Well, I'm sat in a Nissan Leaf 24 kilowatt hour that's done 93,000 miles. Let's see how she drives. As many of you will know, I had a Nissan Leaf for four years, exactly the same battery size as this one. This one though is a Vizier model, whereas mine was a Sentia. So I had the satellite navigation screen, infotainment screen built in. This one doesn't have that. Now this one was purchased, you can probably go back on the channel somewhere and see the video when this first arrived. This was purchased I think about six months after my ownership of my leased one through the business. Really at the success of my ownership this one came along and as I said just a moment ago it's done just over 93,000 miles with no battery loss. So there's no bars lost on this Niddle Beauty at all. Now my parents have owned this car basically since new. I think it had 20 miles on it or something like that. So it was brand new when they got it back in 2014. And they've owned it up until that point and have been using it as a daily driver, not as a backup car or anything like that. And as you can see, it's got 93,000 miles on it. So it's had a considerable amount of use. It has done really well for them. Uh, they have no complaints. So having a quick chat with them, they had an issue with the 12 volt battery and the rear wiper. So the rear wiper stopped working. Now when they took it into a Nissan garage, not to be mentioned, uh, they were told that they needed to replace the wiper motor, etc. And it was about, I think they were quoted around about 400 pounds. But it turns out, when they said, no, thank you, we'd rather not for 400 pounds, that when the 12 volt battery was replaced, it solved the issue. Which begs the question, what would have happened if they said, yes, please, presumably they would have got charged 400 pounds plus the cost of a 12 volt battery and its fitting unnecessarily when all it was was the 12 volt battery which goes on any car of course over a matter of time and um, being six years into ownership it's probably not surprising that the 12 volt needed replacing anyway that's the only issues they've had in its entirety there was a recall which was done on all leafs of this age and i missed out on this recall to do with the steering but they don't know really what that was and that didn't seem to make any difference and they didn't have a problem with the steering anyway now in winter this will do around about 65 ish miles maybe 70 at a push and in summer around about 80 85 miles as i say they've had no battery loss and no no issues this car has performed flawlessly and their motoring in it has been excellent i don't think they've got any complaints at all aside from the fact that when you want to go 300 miles it's more complicated but it's so rare a bit like our usage pattern in my family um i don't hardly ever have to push the car to its limits and so they've just been charging at home it's, it's whenever they're low it gets plugged in it's usually plugged in overnight but they charge during the day as well and so it's always been refueled ready to go each and every time they want to use it they do also have a petrol car because there's two of them and so occasionally they'll swap around if both of them have to go out at the same time then they'll swap around but predominantly this vehicle is used the petrol car hardly gets used at all and so it has worked spot on and it's broken even so in comparison to fuel costs it's essentially paid for itself which is pretty neat and the maintenance costs have been next to none because nothing's gone wrong nothing needs doing um yeah <laughs> cheap motoring absolutely and so we're quite a few years on now the good thing about these blogs is that you saw this um from from essentially day one and they've been using it since then so this is kind of the life cycle of this car and it still goes on now. And I know they're chasing that 100,000 mile mark as well. So they're at 93, it's gonna get there, no problems, isn't it? And it's still keeping the reasonable range, essentially. I think it might've dropped off by like five or something miles, something like that. 
Um, so well within the scope of what you'd expect. So I've been performing exceptionally well. There's not really a lot else to say. The biggest letdown, of course, with this car is the fact that it doesn't have, it, it's got the old style heating element and that's the Vizio model, which I think is non-existent in a Leaf now. But essentially you stick the heating on, the, the range drops significantly. Now, that's nothing new, it's nothing to do with the age of the car. This is the way that they used to be produced. So it's, um, it's interesting how the technology has come along. But of course, that was like that from day one when it was brand new. So kind of, it is what it is. There's not a lot you can do about that. So for the naysayers out there, in terms of battery degradation and all this sort of business, it's, it's been coping, put it that way. Uh, aside from replacing tires and things like you would do in any car, it's the same as when it was new. It's a little bit more beaten up than it was when it was new. But you know, if you can't reverse properly, what do you expect? And it's still no, no rattles, nothing at all. It drives, and this is the first time I've driven it for a long time. It drives fine. There's no looseness or anything. And it's still just as comfortable and it's still like the leaf I remember. It's all good, isn't it? Ah, oh, it's low, very low sun. I'm getting blinded. So I thought I'd just bring this very, very quick update of a Nissan Leaf at 93,000 miles, six years of ownership, thereabouts and let you know how they've been getting on. Quite a few people have asked, how are your parents getting on with their Leaf? Well, the answer is they still have it, they still love it, and it's still problem free. 